Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss about the Kurdish referendum which has been carried out by Barzanis in uh, region in Iraq. And to discuss the issue, we are joined by our editor in chief, Prabir Prakash. So, Prabir, this referendum has taken place. Is it actually going to result in declaration of independence? And what are the reactions of the involved countries in the area? Again, two sets of questions. One is, is it going to lead to uh, a declaration of independence? Now, there are two elements to it. One is, is it a legitimate referendum? Because the Barzani government, the Bar Barzani was a president in 2008 and 2000, uh, two, it was a five year term. So 2013, his term should have ended. New elections should have taken place. The Kurdish parliament, uh, which is really a regional parliament, extended it by another two years. 2015, it should have actually formally ended, after which it has not been uh, again extended. So essentially, his presidency could be considered not legitimate. That's one part of it. So is it a legitimate referendum at all? Secondly, without the consent of Iraq, which after all it is a part of Pardon. legally, is there a legal referendum possible to be held by not even a fully legitimate government, shall we say, of the Kurdish region. So these are the two illegitimacies, as it were, of the referendum itself. It's an enabling provision for Barzani to bargain with, if he wants, with uh, Iraq. Uh, it's also for Iraq to consider whether they'll accept this referendum or not, and we'll come to that in a minute. But he has not declared, Barzani and his group has not declared independence. They've got 92% votes for all those who cast votes, obviously, largely were in favor of independence, but he hasn't declared independence. So we shouldn't take it, the referendum as a given that this has automatically uh, led to or will lead to independence. That's one part of it. The second question that you raised, what are the response of the countries? Clearly, none of the countries in that region want an independent Kurdistan. How homogeneous are the Kurds in that area? Open question. There's 28 million Kurds in that region. Uh, the largest, about 12 to 14 million, really are in Turkey. Uh, others, uh, I think the next largest is Iran, then Iraq, and about 2 million in Syria. So this is the total of 28 million in the region. They're not homogeneous in terms of either religion or in terms of the language they speak. There is an ethnic identity of being Kurds. That's what unites them. And this is the recognition with which uh, Ocalan, who is now in prison in, Turkish, uh, in Turkey, he had said we should look for soft borders, autonomy, and not look for now national uh, identity and self-determination in terms of the Kurdistan. That's been Ocalan's position, and that's something that the PKK has been following, though they have now come again into a st almost virtual stage of civil war in Turkey. Barzani is only one part of it, okay, and he has been an old CIA asset. The Peshmerga were built by Israel to fight against Iraq, and the, the, the Israel had not really forgiven the Iraqis during the 48 war, having defeated them. The Iraqi brigade there did defeat Israeli uh, forces at that point of time, or the Zionist forces at that point of time. So they were really itching for a fight, and they found Kurds in Iraq to be a vehicle for that. The Peshmerga were built on that basis. The whole politi geopolitics in that region has changed. It was earlier the Shah of Iran who was supporting the Peshmergas. It was uh, CIA, of course, and Israel who were the main uh, people who were involved in all of this. And that was an anti uh, Ba'athist Iraq operation that they were doing. Now, as I said, the things have changed. In the realignment that has taken place, while Turkey and Iran may be on the opposite sides, but given what has happened in the region, they're not as opposed to each other as they were. Saudi Arabia has emerged as a new pole, and the Americans are no longer the best friends of the Turks after the kind of coup attempt that was there in Turkey. With this realignment, Turkey who was the firmest backer of the Barzanis. He was training their uh, people, he was training their army, he was allowing oil to pass through, he three, he, Turkey also sees the threat of a Kurdish state coming up in the region because then the PKK's demand for an independent autonomous region or independence would then be a threat to Turkey. 
So Turkey has come down very heavily. They haven't stopped things from the moving in the border, but they have come heavily. They've stopped flights to Erbil. So have certain other countries. The flights to Erbil have stopped. They are threatening to stop the flow of both food as well as oil. Certainly they can stop oil. Their financial transactions are going to be hit already. Uh, Bank of Iraq has said that they will not accept uh, uh, transactions for Kurdistan. So Irbil, which is where the center of the Barzani clan today is, is coming under attack of this kind, isolation of this kind, with all the surrounding states having declared they will not accept uh, independent republic of Kurdistan in Iraq which Barzani is uh, a referendum was, it doesn't look likely that this is going to be easy without any external, uh, shall we say, access to the world. How much the Americans and the Israelis the support, Israelis have declared open support for Kurdish region, particularly the Barzanis who are their old allies. Their entire Peshbarga, as I told you, was built by the Israeli uh, Mossad and the Israeli uh, in, uh, forces. So how much Israel can play is an open question. They don't really have any easy access to the region. Americans, yes, they would have access to air, but how much they want to invest and alienate Turkey completely, still a major NATO power, is something we have to see. So I don't see this going anywhere except isolation for Barzani externally, but it could help him to retain control over a restive Kurdish Republic uh, in a, a restive uh, Kurdish people in the region who are not happy with the fact that they have an illegitimate president holding on to power without local sanction. So Prabhu, as you have pointed out the reactions of different countries and what it is going to lead to, uh, how are things going to change in Iraq and Syria and since there is a lot of fighting going on, the free Syrian army is there, what will be the reaction of Bashar al-Assad government regarding it? What is going to happen there? Well, the, the major element now is the collapse of the ISIS, which is also making the Kurds uh, react in different ways. Because as it vacates the area, who is going to grab it is really also the issue. So uh, if you remember, when the ISIS attacked the Sinjar mountainous regions, and uh, this, is, this was a really uh, something which is a real big blot on Peshbarga. The, literally either withdrew or ran away, whichever way you look at it. And it was actually the PKK, YPG firefighters who came in that region to the defense of the Yezidis, uh, that who are uh, not really uh, fully in that sense of Kurdish identity, but ethnically may be considered Kurdish, but have different religious beliefs. They're neither Sunnis or Shias. So all of this saw actually only PKK and the YPG come to their defense. The Peshbargas ran away or withdrew from the area. Now, Peshbargas or the uh, Barzani clan's relationship with the ISIS seems to have been very much of a hide and seek one. They have not engaged with them, they have not fought against them, and it would also seem to indicate that the Americans wanted ISIS to grab territory in that part to put pressure at the time on the Iraqi government, which they felt was too pro getting too close to Iran. And also, of course, put pressure on Bashar al-Assad, who they wanted to uh, depose or wanted a regime change. So you see tension growing between the uh, Kurdish forces as well as the Syrian army. And the Americans have seemed to be playing a game of trying to get the oil to the Kurdish uh, groups, in which, which case they can exercise an indirect control over that. It's also very similar in Iraq. The question is, who now gets Kirkuk? Uh, who is, uh, once the ISIS falls, who takes that region's oil is also the reason Barzani would like to flex his muscles. So this is one part of it. I think this is something that we have to see how it develops. I have uh, till now believed that the YPG has been, the YPG has been playing a very careful game of calibrating how much it opposes the Syrian government and how much it opposes the Russian uh, forces and how much it recognizes that without some amount of, uh, shall we say, negotiations with the Syrian government, it cannot face the Turks alone. And clearly, the Turks are the major enemy because YPG is very close to PKK, if not really a part of it. So given that equation, 
I do not believe that the Syrian Kurdish forces will be, be, behave the way Barzani's forces will. Barzani has a stake only in the oil and the loot of the region for personal gains. So that's been the problem there. How much the Kurdish population will support Barzani is a bigger issue for me. And will the, uh, they be able, with the opposition that Iraq is now going to place, be able to continue to expand and take over the oil-rich areas which are with ISIS till now? That's something we have to see. The fall of, fall of Mosul is the Iraqi army which has played a, the, a role. And it's clear that they have been the primary forces fighting the ISIS. And when ISIS has fallen, whether the vultures of the Barzani clan will try and take over the oil wealth without fighting from the ISIS is really the question that we have to see. And that's the larger geopolitical stake that is there in the fall of ISIS and attempts by Barzani to expand his, shall we say, his share of the oil wealth. Thanks a lot, Prabir, and as these things proceed, we'll be coming back to you on such issues. Thank you for watching NewsClick. Please keep following our Facebook page, our Twitter handle, and our YouTube account.